the Shin Megami Tensei 25th Anniversary Special 3DS Project has finally been revealed to be Strange Journey Deep, the latest mainline release from Atlas. But before we talk about it, we gotta talk about the Atlas 2017 release livestream. Now, this was advertised to be talking about all the games that Atlas was going to be releasing in this current year. And given that they only showed off three games, that's a little bit on the worrying side, but hey, it's three games instead of zero. So that's pretty cool in my book. The first game that they introduced was Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology, which is a remake of the DS title from Atlas. New gameplay it was shown, but I'll be honest with you, it looks largely the same from what we understand, minus the redesigned characters. Now, we'll be talking about this game a little bit later. At the moment, I don't really have too much to comment on this game since I've never actually finished Radiant Historia for the DS. I actually just bought it kind of recently, so bear in mind, I don't really have too much to comment on this specific game, but hey, for fans of that series, it's cool to see what the characters look like redesigned, and hopefully this increases the popularity of the series. Up next, Atlas teased, um, Etrian Odyssey Mystery Dungeon 2. Yeah, don't, I, I didn't even play the first one. I don't know a single person that did, but they're making a sequel, and that's kind of cool for people that like it. And the last remaining chunk of this live stream was devoted to talking about Strange Journey Deep, which is their big release for 2017. Now, given that Atlas has been working on Persona 5, SMT4, Apocalypse, and the Maniacs team, which is mostly responsible for producing the mainline Shimogami Tensei games, are most likely working on SMT Switch, it's kind of hard to ask, alright, I want this big, magnificent 3DS game that's going to blow my mind. That just wasn't going to happen, guys. My money was on a Shin Megami Tensei 1 and 2 remake bundle. I think that would have been really easy to produce, but hey, they went with remaking Strange Journey, which in its own regard is pretty cool. But sadly, no gameplay footage was shown. However, we do know a couple of fine details about this new... It's not a sequel, it's like a retelling, more or less in the mainline Shin Megami Tensei series. So, Strange Journey Deep, what's it all about? What does it change? What does it do differently? Well, we don't really know at the moment. There was no gameplay in this live stream at all, only a short promotional video for us to look at. Which is honestly a shame. When you're talking about a 3DS SMT project, you really should show us at least one clip of what the dungeon design is going to look like, but that will be saved for March 30th, and the weekly Famitsu, because that's just how Japan works, I guess. I don't know. But we did get a couple of fine details from this live stream. So today we're going to be talking about it. So we got the key image of the game, which is this girl who's named Alex. And this very strange owl demon with hands and a snake body. Now, I have no idea what demon this could be. Heck, for all I know, they could just make it up. His name could be... I don't know, that could be Beetlejuice for all I know, but he looks cool. I really like this demon design. In fact, I kind of like how a lot of modern day SMT games have this sort of anime protagonist and this really horrifying and very off-puttingly different demon in the background. I don't know. Dogs and Nanashi was kind of a good combo. Is this, um, this girl's, like, demon stand, for lack of a better term? Probably not. I don't think they're even correlated. Just something's giving me that gut reaction, but maybe they're best friends. And they have a critical role in this new retelling of Strange Journey. Now, apparently, Alex is on a mission to kill the main character, and she is more or less involved in one of the new endings added to the game. In this key image here, you can see her face and what her, like, actual artwork resembles. And I gotta say, she looks very, very good. Not like the original artwork from Kazuma Kaneko, but still pretty great. So explain what the crud happened here. So I just need a little mini rant at the moment. So the snake, owl, demon, bird, god thing looks amazing. Alex, the uh, girl of the game, looks good as well. What the crap happened here? Did the... did? Did anyone at Atlas even draw this? I mean, 
Look at Gore! Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> I'm not happy. And a lot of other Atlas fans are not. Because honestly, this just looks kind of strange. Now, I am honestly incredibly biased. Kazuma Kaneko is my favorite artist. Not just from video games, just all time. I love his work to death. And I believe in Strange Journey, his artwork was at its peak. And to see that the characters that he designed just sort of have this, I don't know, like this artificialness to them is really, really strange. Like seriously, him ends, why did, why, why did they give him a completely different pose? He has this weird expression like, heh, long time no see, Sonic. It's just like, what? I don't know, I don't, he's strange, but hey, I can't, I can't hate on it too much. At least, hey, maybe later down the line, if all goes according to plan, there will be DLC to give us the original portraits, because that is a mechanic that was in Etrian Odyssey Untold 2, and is going to appear in Radiant Historia Chronology, which did a similar thing. Some of the characters had complete redesigns. Why? I don't know. Was it to please investors? Just they wanted to make it a little bit marketable to the wider Japanese audience? It's unclear, but the great people at Atlas, I can't even say this enough, when they make games, they always give us options. And having the option to go back to the traditional artwork us Strange Journey fans have grown accustomed to and absolutely adore would be a really, really good addition in my opinion. But despite Jimenez's very strange posture and Zelenin, that's the first time I've ever tried to say her name out loud, finally deciding to put her hand down like she was just got tired of it, like, it's been seven years, I'm done. I'm gonna be lazy like everyone else in the in the group. This does look promising for a lot of reasons. First off, Strange Journey, no matter what you say, is a very unique game. Some people say it's strange. Alright, whatever. It has a unique art style, unique theme. It's not your typical Shin Megami Tensei game. And I love it for that reason. Instead of appearing in a post-apocalyptic Tokyo or the Vortex world, it's in Antarctica in these strange, just crazy areas where things are just blown out of proportion. For those who haven't played it, I don't really want to spoil too much, but there is, in fact, basically a dungeon that is Sam's Club with demons, if you live in America. I don't know what the parallels are in other places, but that is stinking cool. Fending off hordes of demons in a shopping department. I don't know about you, that's something pretty awesome. And I was always hoping, like, man, what if we had a 3D remake of this game? But from what it appears, this is going to most likely be a 2D remake. Because at the end of the day, Strange Journey is a dungeon crawler. And it cannot be played any other way. One last thing of note, the demon Maria, which came from Shin Megami Tensei 9 on the Xbox. Yeah, there's an SMT game on the Xbox. Don't bother looking into it, it's not really that great. Does make an appearance in this live stream, which is kind of interesting because since she was based on Mother Mary, basically, from the Bible, a lot of people were saying that this art would never actually be reused since, well, that's a very controversial figure in the Christian faith to put into a video game, just throwing that out there, but apparently she's coming and Honestly, that's pretty cool. It appears that a lot of Kazuma Kaneko's artwork may appear in this game where it hasn't appeared otherwise, such as Adam and Eve, and if those demons come back, hey, that'd be pretty darn cool. But now we're pretty much done talking about the facts. If you came for just like a little news update, this is pretty much the end of it. You can now save anywhere in dungeons. That's another thing that they just barely mentioned in this live stream. And there's also going to be a new ending route. But SMT for Switch did get a new uh, image for like literally two seconds. And it's this. Speculate what the crud this is all you want. I don't, it, it could be just concept art for all we know. Don't really know how that's worth showing Atlas, but whatever. Can't complain. So despite the live stream kind of being on the short side as far as like producing information, honestly... It wasn't that bad. I pretty much knew they were going to save the best for last, as they usually do, so I didn't even watch all of it. But hey, we got to see uh, this guy again, so it wasn't the worst thing in the world. You got to keep in mind, these Japanese live streams are 
radically different than what we have come to expect here in the West. Like E3, like Nintendo Directs, nothing. No, they don't have anything like that. And currently, I don't think Atlas could even produce something like that if they wanted to without the outside assistance from either Sony or Sega giving them some cash because keep in mind, Atlas is 100 and something people, not a large studio. So take it as you will. So now that we got all the facts out of the way, I just want to talk a little bit about Strange Journey and how I specifically feel about this game. Keep in mind, these are just my opinions and they're very subjective. Now, I played Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey in one week. I accomplished literally everything you can do in that game in a single week. The second I like put it in my DS, I could not stop playing it. However, there are a couple things I just generally really don't like about it. Now, one of those things, they can't really help, I guess. I mean, it's a product of the time, honestly. It just, it does not look great based on what we have. Like, we've been 100% spoiled by the 3DS in my eyes. Going back to get this footage to play, like, god dang, this game does not look amazing. So, out of all the Atlas games that could potentially get a remake, hey, this wasn't a bad one to pick, assuming they actually upscale the dungeon walls, etc. Because realistically, if, if they don't do anything, like th this is not going to sell well at all. Ideally, I think they're going to give it the Etrian Odyssey Untold treatment, where they're going to basically keep the same identical map, but make the tiles look a lot better, and make the walls look a lot better because ideally making a dungeon crawler isn't super hard you just need good wall textures good enemies and you need a somewhat decent story and you're probably gonna make a majority of your fans happy so now that we've assessed that looks like dog poop um what about the art style the art style in my opinion it it probably didn't even need to be changed like I don't know why they even bothered it looks so good and they're even using Kazuma Kaneko's demons which have a matching art style, so why would you ever change them? The music's the same, they didn't want to change that because that was also, like, grade A, right? So, why change what isn't broken? Some people commented that they wanted the main character to look more Japanese, because in the Japanese release, the main character was from Japan, and in America, he came from America, which was actually kind of cool. In my opinion, the original artwork, he looks pretty stinking white. So that is some fair criticism if they're trying to keep that theme going. But ideally, this major complaint could be completely gone if just someone at Atlas HQ is like, okay, we can give them the same old portraits because the game's voice acted. They don't they don't move like their lips. It's a 3DS game for crying out loud. It doesn't matter, you know? Like, it's so easy just to replace one image with another, unless they're just trying to completely eradicate Kazuma Kaneko's art style from future, like, Shin Megami Tensei games. Which will be a darn shame, because it's the 25th anniversary of the series, and for crying out loud, he's been with the company since day one. Someone fact check me on that, I don't, I'm just kind of assuming. He probably is, right? Right, okay. So now that we've assessed that, it looks like crap, they should probably let people choose what art style they want to use for the main cast. What else is making people kind of upset over this? What else is making people kind of upset? Mostly for me, I'm just feeling like, okay, they wanted to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Shin Megami Tensei. So they looked, alright, what game can we re-release for Nintendo 3DS the cheapest? And it was Strange Journey, because it's pretty much the newest other than SMT4. So, they went with that. Now, in my eyes, out of all the games, Strange Journey probably didn't need a remake. Sure, it's not the most accessible game to find, just at all. It's never been re-released here in North America, and I imagine it hasn't either in Japan. I could be wrong about that. I don't know too much about their virtual console. But hey, it's still a game that... I want to play. Strange Journey, it, like I said before, it has a very interesting narrative. I can't say it's great, but it does a couple things I didn't see coming. It doesn't really answer a lot of questions, and I'm kind of hoping that they look over the script and be like, huh, yeah, we kind of did just forget that was an element of the game at the last minute for the final battle. Huh, like, okay, there, I have a lot of 
minor gripes about Strange Journey, but overall, I still find it to be an enjoyable game. Albeit, very unapproachable from, like, a newcomer. Like, it just... People will tell you, oh yeah, it's one of the hardest. It's one of the most difficult. The demon co-op system doesn't even work after this. It does work, but it's kind of weak. So I'm hoping for a lot. Since the general premise of Strange Journey is sound, they don't really need to change that. I'm really hoping for a lot of innovation in gameplay while still sticking to the original. And I think they could very easily do this in deep, but only time will tell. The most glaring problem this game had in my eyes was the sheer lack of save spots in the dungeons and the insanely high encounter rate despite having a repel up, which was kind of a thing in Etrian Odyssey, and I really hope the Etrian Odyssey people are still involved in this game in some regard, but they toned down on the map difficulty because some of the later areas in Strange Journey just get flat out ludicrous. Like, there's no way around it. Like. I've shown people maps of, like, the middle area in the game multiple times just to prove a point. This... This is not... It, it's fun, but god dang, it's kind of overkill. Strange Journey was created in a way to sort of recapture the SNES style of Shin Megami Tensei and Dungeon Crawlers in general. And in doing so, I think they brought over... A lot of the bad stuff from those type of games, many quality of life attributes that more modern Shin Megami Tensei games have were absent, and that's kind of strange from a company that usually gets better with every single release, but I'm not going to complain too much about that. I see this as a love letter from Atlas to its fans. Hey. Here's this game, pretty much universally loved by hardcore SMT fans for good reason. It's hard as heck and cool as heck. And Himans is a pretty cool character, so hey, we're gonna remake it for you. And our knee jerk reaction is, Ugh, Himans has been ruined. I hate you. And that, and that I feel isn't necessarily fair. Now, it is perfectly acceptable to criticize, um, Alex. Hmm, character with black hair that's being thrown into the re-release and might actually make the plot way worse. When has Atlas ever done that before? But I'm staying optimistic here, like... They could actually do a lot of good with this, and this might actually get some new fans into Shin Megami Tensei through the anime, Sugoi, I don't know that many Japanese words, uh, girl, Chan, that they put onto the box art. Which means more money for Atlas. Which means more money for Atlas and that they can get closer to releasing Nocturne HD, boys. 2017. It's come, no, it's not. It's probably not going to happen, guys. A lot of people were very excited to... A lot of people, myself included, had their hopes super high for this live stream Because there was a survey going around after Persona 5 was released in Japan asking, What future releases would you like from Atlas? HD remakes, etc. A pinball game? I voted for the pinball game, that'd be sick as heck. But at the end of the day, we got three 3DS games, which at this point, RPGs coming out on the 3DS, it's almost like a jaded experience. They're fairly cheap to produce, and we get them year round, it seems. That sounds super ungrateful because we've had some fantastic titles on 3DS, but it's nothing that's going to blow our mind. And I don't think we can really expect too much after Persona 5 just literally came out, and the team that is most known for making the most insane titles at Atlas are working on a project that just started development with a new studio. So, all in all, what do you think about Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Deep? I don't know why, it's just like the weirdest. Um, where they could have gone with to describe that, um, Personally, I'm optimistic, but I'm a little bit worried it's going to have the same, like, level of narrative, or... Here's just my minor gripe about Atlas and just RPG companies in general. When a re-release of a game comes out, and they add a specific character, it usually does not have the same narrative quality of its original work. Simply put, because the main people don't usually come in and rewrite this character in and make it, like, a seamless transition. They sort of act like, oh, they were here all along, you just never knew, and it doesn't really work. I don't know, I'm very critical of that type of involvement, specifically from Devil Survivor 2, Record Breaker. 
Think of the alternate story of that game being the quality of this new story. Now, not to say it was terrible, it just didn't really live up to the original because the original was pretty darn good. Will Strange Journey Deep follow that same pattern? We don't know. All we know is that that owl thing looks cool and I like it a lot. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Honestly, I could talk about God Dang Strange Journey for hours on end, and I may do one day if we ever get this game in the West. I'm pretty darn sure we will, but I'm sort of hesitant to say for sure since Strange Journey is kind of a long game and I don't know if they could actually get voice actors to do all of that given Atlas USA's budget, but hey. Yet again, I'm staying optimistic. So what did you think about the reveal? Are you bummed out that we didn't get Shin Megami Tensei 1 HD Remake? Did you want something else? Were you expecting a Persona 5 game, Persona 5 Crimson Edition, or some crud like that, or a Persona 3 and 4 Remake? And if that is you, how bummed out are you? Let me know. I love reading your guys' comments and just hearing what you have to think about what Atlas is doing as a company. At the end of the day, they ain't gonna take our consideration into a fact, we're from America. But hey, it's still fun to talk and converse with one another. Anyways, thanks again guys, with one another. Thanks again guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully we have some gameplay to analyze from this new release from Atlas. So see you guys then. Bye.